Hey everyone, today we're gonna to be creating a virtual assistant powered by LLMs. It'll go through your to-do list and automatically execute tasks for you. And it's gonna be a Chrome extension that we install, but all the LLMs will be run locally. So your data stays private. So stay tuned. Hey guys, how's it going? Today we're gonna to be making a virtual assistant that helps us do tasks um, such as writing emails, um, going through our to-do list, etc. So we're gonna be creating this using cursor and uh, let's just get started. So we'll uh, open up the terminal here and we'll do CD desktop. We'll then go to our projects directory and we'll make a directory called uh, the assistant. Um, hopefully that's spelled right. Um, so we're going to cd into that and we're going to open that uh, in our cursor. So you can see here we've opened it um, and, uh, and one of the main things is we're going to make this into a Chrome extension. So it should be able to work dynamically and help support us uh, on doing tasks. So um, what we can do probably is get it to work on um, a Notion page. So to start that, um, I could probably go to Notion. Um, and we can create a new page back. Um, and uh, so what I've done is I've just created a new uh, Notion page. So if I go to Chrome and um, and I start the new Notion page. Let me just go here. Um, we can go to to-dos. And so we've created a to-do list here, um, which has uh, our to-dos. So we're gonna be creating a Chrome extension, Chrome extension virtual assistant that helps us do these tasks. So let me do here uh, one, which is, for example, send email, uh, send cold email to client. And we'll write that as one of them. Um, let's say, get birthday present for Jack. And uh, and we'll think of some a couple more to-dos, such as uh, find out how to get a UK passport, uh, which is one on my personal to-do list. Um, so um, I'll put that there, and um, and we can start that in uh, in VS Code as well. So um, I'll be putting that in here, and I'll say create a Chrome extension that reads from that when uh, it goes to this URL, it scans the Notion page for check boxes. And what I can do here to help it out is I can actually send it what these check boxes look like. Um, and let's see if, I probably can't sell the, send the full HTML. Um, scans the checkboxes and starts executing the tasks in my to-do list. Here is what the HTML looks like for context. So let's see if that's too long but it's telling me already some files uh, which I have to use. Um, I've realized here that I'm using the typical cursor, I think, so it's allowing me to apply. Um, and let's see if it creates it. It says no file to apply to, so um, I'll just have to create here a manifest.json I'll also create a background.json and I'll also create a content, content.js. So now this should work. Let's see. Continue. 
I'll also apply here. And um, I'll also apply this here. Um, and it looks like this has gone over. But um, I think it would have this together with this as well. So I think that should be it. And then here, um, uh, it would be the pop-up HTML file. So let's do pop-up .html. And it also says here a popup.js. And then it says add icons here, and you can load the Chrome extension, which I've done before. Extensions, and you can load an unpacked extension. And so if I go to my desktop and go to the projects. Go to Virtual Assistant. It says it couldn't load the manifest file, so we'll go to the manifest file. Oh, and so um, ah, so this says content.json, but really it should be the manifest. So that's content.json. That's content.js. This is background.js. So I missed this one, and it should be background.js. And this is the manifest. So I think it's just got it wrong slightly. But let's try it out now. And uh, it's saying it can't find an image, so I'm just going to uh, not have an image for now. So we click retry, there we go. So it should be there and we can pin it. And let's see if when we go to here, what happens to this notion file. Execute tasks. And let's go to the console. Failed to fetch, but I don't think it's actually doing anything. Okay, so now we say here, Um, let's look at what it's doing in more detail. So when there's a checkbox, it should click the checkbox. Um, so we should say, no, that isn't what you should do. Um, if the current file is a, let's check in more depth here what the content is and so it says if the class is no translate the future and the present everything flows and maybe we can get away with this so we can maybe do uh, document dot Query selector all and um, let's just do dot no translate. There is nothing to fear. I'm assuming there's many. So that's already the 24th one. So maybe we can use several of these. And, um, and as long as we then just get
let's try notion page content first so we do dot query selector all notion page content So we do that, and that's the content of the page, which is great. And then we do do dot query selector all, and then we do dot no translate. Has that worked? Doesn't seem like it has. So we try to understand why, because when we do that, we get this. And so it's probably it's because it's not a document type. And so maybe we can't do dot query selector all again. Dot query. Like water. Now you put water into a cup. It becomes the cup. You put water into a bottle, it becomes the bottle. You put it in a teapot, it becomes the teapot. Um don't know. Or it can crash. Translate. Water, my friend. Um, so there's nothing in here that has no translate, but it does seem like there is. Maybe it's... Yeah, so class is no... Oh, it's no translate without the dash. So let's try again. There we go. So if we do the first element, we get empty. So dot inner HTML. And then maybe we do dot filter. E, e dot H, uh, e dot inner HTML. And we do like not not something like that. dot filter is not a function so what we could do here is um, let's just ask So we could just do array from, let's try that. Array dot from, oop. Let's see what happens when we do that. So there's something that's gone wrong somewhere here. I think it's because we index the first element. So if we do this and we just remove this first element, there we go. We should get all three. Perfect. Um, and then if we go inside, there should be an inner text field. Yep, in each inner HTML. Um, will have the right content. So now that we've done a little bit of this investigation, um, we can supply this here and we say, uh, instead of taking the unticked boxes, you should open the pop-up dot html when the you should show an a green button next to each to do list item and then when clicked call an llm to 
execute the task. Here is the script to acquire all to-dos from the page. So let's see if it does that. And so this is updating content.js. And I think we might add some permissions as well. Let's see here to manifest.json. It does give the full code. icons in the manifest. Try this out now. So if we reload, should show a green button next to each one. I don't think it is. Let's see if we click execute tasks. It doesn't seem like it has. We can go to the errors. Let's clear all the errors. I think this is um the same thing. This is what I love, like, right before you fall. Summering around, you've been guessing your direction. Next up, you can see it all. Let's try one more time, but I don't think it has any difference. Saying it's not defined. 
So, um, let's see if that was changing anything. I can maybe define this in here to see if it changes anything. And execute buttons, but I can also just define it um, by const and execute buttons equals. Let's see if that works. Clear all that unpacked. See the errors. Yeah, it's saying here. So it's the wrong one that it's referring to actually. So it had nothing to do with here. My bad. Um, and it's still in, instead in pop-up JS. And so, um, So I think the, the change here is to just load everything on top of JS, I think. So let's try that out for now. Clear all. Okay, so the, that's behaving weirdly, and let's just look here to do's uh, for each. To do dot parent element append uh, child. Append the button. And so it doesn't seem to be liking that. Um, Let me see if there's another way to do this, which is um, array um, from I'll just reload this and see, I guess. not detecting it and so I should just do document dot query selector machine page content OK, 
Hashem. Um, I might try to just see if this full thing gives me something. It says array. Okay. So we do zero and we do. Um, dot inner HTML plus equals button hi. Let's see. Mm, so it doesn't like. The mutation. So maybe that's kind of part of it. doesn't like the mutation piece so I think it reverts everything back um, so smart from notion side <laughs> but um, we then may want to change a couple things of how we do things then um, maybe we do instead that it imports all of the to do's In, uh, instead, do it so it imports all the to dos and displays them in the pop-up .html, which opens. Um, we'll change background, we'll change content.js, we'll change popup.html, and popup.js, and let's run it all. And I don't these seem to be getting um, the to do list stuff. Go to public dish, we only have a to do list here. And so, what this supposedly does document delta element by to do list. Just spin it round, we just spin it round. Just gonna travel. 
Okay, we're not seeing anything here, which is weird. Nothing is happening. Background jams. Let's, uh, let's jump straight into it. So we've created this virtual assistant. As we've seen, Notion is being a little bit annoying. And <laughs> whenever we change anything on the website, it's, um, it's telling us to basically um, screw off. So uh, we'll try maybe one more time. Um, but I believed, uh, I believe that it told it, that it reversed a mutation. So um, understand this warning. So up, so basically it's telling me that it's reversing everything. So instead we went for the option that it should open this up. So let's uh, kind of update this because obviously it's not working. And we say um, currently, um, currently pop up dot html is not opening when i go to the notion website please open the html pop up html when i go to so let's wait to see. So it says we have to update manifest.json, which I don't think we should. Oh, it's adding tabs here as well. Then background.js. Which is adding this piece to up to open it, and this is in content.js, and here in popup.html, and this is popup.js. So an update to all files. Okay, let's try it out. Um, oh. So if we go here, um, Chrome extensions. We should be able to load unpacked. There we go. Oh, and it opens it here. Um, I don't want it to open separately. So I'll just say, I don't want the HTML to open as a separate window 
but only to open it as it would when you click the extension button. Okay, so it's telling me to programmatically click the pop-up. Let me just put that. Okay, so it's telling me that um, can't use the API key piece, which is what I've been using up until now. Upload content.js as well. Inject pop-up. Okay, so let's load this unpacked. And uh, this is not working. <laughs> so uh, we will go see if we have any errors. We do have errors. So it's telling us um, cannot access contents of URL extension manifest must re request access to the host. So let's see if this gives us access. Background.js, we update. I don't think these have changed at all. Um, but let's try it out. Unknown pattern or is misformed, malformed. We'll try one more time. And it's still saying it, so I think it just doesn't exist. Um, try, maybe we say instead, try another. So what, what, what it's doing here, it's that it's injecting it, injecting the pop-up. Um, and so instead here we can say, try another method instead of injecting the pop-up to open. Instead I have the pop-up .html open when the URL is found the same way as when someone clicks the Chrome extension button. Okay, let's try this out now. So that goes back to normal. Um, here we have open pop-up. Content.js becomes a lot simpler. And then pop-up.js doesn't seem to change much. Pop-up.html. There we go. Clear load impact. So we got this. Okay, so we'll just go into here. See if that works. Okay.
is telling us uh, message received open pop-up, but it doesn't seem to work. So it first says, um, could not establish connection receiving and does not exist, which is weird. Go to background. It did seem to print open pop-up. Oh, one second, I just need to charge. We're back. <laughs> um, and so uh, what we were finding was that it wasn't able, we, we saw that it was saying open pop-up. And so it must have happened somewhere because I can see it here quite clearly. So message received in content.js. So it says message received. And so what I might do is, um, I might do a try catch console.log didn't work opening pop up and then we also console.log e so let's try that out load unpacked this is message received did not establish connection in background.js so let's see if um, there's any thing here. It took me hours to find out because it turns out I just need to refresh both the extension and the web page. Okay, so I don't think it's that. <laughs> um, cannot. Let me um, look at this error as well. Let's see what it says. Site permissions must be added to host permissions, not permissions. I'll just say, use this to fix manifest dot JSON. Given I'm getting this error. Cool. So it's um, seemed to have updated that piece. Let's go to Papa JS. Let's go to content. Pop up HTML. Okay. So we clear our load unpacked. Okay, let's see what errors. So notion page content not found is the only error we get now. Um, let me see if I can. Uh, okay, so I'll say as well here. I'm getting the message received.
uh, Chrome extension programmatically open pop-up. So what, what uh, version of Chrome are we on? 128, so that should be fine. Um, the the pop-up is not opening programmatically when I go to the Notion website. Use this to fix it. So it's almost um we're almost kind of serving as a rag right here. We're um going into the uh, where we think that the LM is missing information. We're jumping in, and uh, we're adding information that we think is valuable. Um, and especially if we don't have the specific knowledge here. So here uh, it's saying that there is a command, um, which might come in handy. But more than anything, let's read. Okay, um, background.js, content.js, popup.js, HTML. Okay. Uh, let me clear all, load unpacked. So it's saying too many requests. Okay, that's weird because it didn't really open thing. And so it's saying so it should open the pop up with. Uh, control shift Y. Control, control shift Y. Go. So that's not really worked. <laughs> uh, 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 let me see. So they're no longer receiving uh, the pop-up message. Which is annoying. So I think we were on to something before. Let me revert what we had before. So this is what we had before. We'll clear all, we'll load unpacked. And it's saying the message is received, but the content isn't found. So message received, open pop-up. And then it says notion cont page content not found. So notion page content not found. So it's saying here, and that's when it does document.query selector, right? And so extract to do is, is being called. And if we look, it means that here, open pop up. Let's try to run that first and see what it says. So we'll load unpacked, clear all. And so it's called open pop-up, but it hasn't really worked. So Chrome runtime send message. And so if 
we open one of these. Okay, starting new versions to open pop up. Let's see if this works instead. And we can do load unpacked, clear all. Cannot read properties of undefined, reading open pop up. Um, so maybe open pop up Chrome extension. <laughs> and so maybe we can um, look at the documentation. Um, So it's only a user triggered event handler that can do it, I believe. Let's read through. So we see Okay, let's see if this works. And so It's saying that there's an error here which I believe might be that we have to do something with this. Yep. But I believe that this must be pretty similar. Let's try one more time. And could it be that it's not available in content.js? Okay. So that was my handy little timer. Um, we'll start this again. And this just helps us keep track. So, um, okay, this is being quite annoying. Um, so people are saying that here they were able to Here we check if we're on the Google homepage or not. It 
let's try this out for now. Um, and maybe we just do like start with motion dot so. Cannot read properties of undefined on updated. Chrome dot tabs. Maybe this happens to happen somewhere else. Let's try in background. Content. So for now, I can comment this out and let's load unpacked and clear all. Okay, so it's saying that. We have to be able to access the host. Let's also add then background.js to see if that helps with anything. So um, we're getting this, and so we can give it here. So it's manifest version three as well. Okay, so um, I don't think that should go there. Let's keep reading here to see where exactly they put it. So we want to re re remove the default pop-up. Okay, so we can go here and it's telling us in the background script, we wanna add this. And in the content script, we wanna add this. 
so let's reload it. We're making a lot of mistakes here, but <laughs> we're learning. Okay, what are we getting here? So we don't get any errors here for now. It says receiving does not exist. Cannot read properties of updated. Let me actually just clear this all to make sure that I didn't uh, get any errors from before. Uncaught type error cannot read unupdated. So if we go to background, let's just do unupdated. Maybe we just comment this out for now. really getting much at this point which is weird because we'd expect this to open um, but popup.html isn't the uh, isn't here anymore so let's maybe load unpacked fingers crossed and nothing is happening. <laughs> okay, um, let's debug a little bit. So here we'll put a console.log. Not opened. Okay. Okay. So we're not even getting anything here, but that's also the background JS script. So maybe that's the wrong one here. We'll also look at content.js and I don't think I even have to use window. Let me try that. So no changes here. Which is weird because I'd expect this to so console dot log sent message. So it sent the message. Here it's an options page. Maybe you just have to remove this part. What's wrong with this Chrome extension code? So it's just using that directly. Let's see if that works.
So some message. No errors. Okay. So it's not done anything. Um And I can't really see if this is run either. So um, there we go. Um, error did not open an options page. Um, so options page is popup dot html okay ah so there we go <laughs> so it opens it up separately it's annoying that it doesn't allow you to open it up in the tab but um i think we should be able to work with that for now annoyingly <laughs> um so cool We've opened that options page. Um, so let me just go back and we can delete some of the other stuff. Well, maybe it helps, but let's see. Um, look at all the code files. This is what is working right now. I want you to... Uh, when the... Uh, want you to get all the information from all the to do's information from when it's fully loaded and then open up options.html. Save it to storage and then open up uh, loading in all the to do's. Let's see if it fixes it and we'll. Okay, so. Copy this into manifest. And so I've added storage um, to handle the updates. Let me see that it doesn't change too much. So this on message. goes first and then content.js So I want to copy this and I call it options.html. And then options.js. Okay, let's load this in. Okay. So um, it's taking its time. It's saying that it can't access the host. And that is background.js. Okay. So here it's saying that it should execute content.js.
And so here it's saying, but it's already in host permissions, I believe. So that's not it. So what, what's um, what's this actually trying to do? Because before we receive the message from content.js, and so this handles it and opens it, right? Add listener, if the action is this, then it does that. So content.js is pretty empty. So it extracts the to-dos and then it opens. So I don't even think that we maybe need this. So here in content.js, if let's just let's just kind of ignore some of it. Let's just ignore this and let's see if we can run it. Okay. We're not getting any errors. But it's also not working for some reason. Because previously we were getting So I think maybe in background.js we might be getting an error. Let's see. Okay. So So let's do console.log working. DOM loaded. So we load the unpacked. Okay, so it's not showing up. And it previously was. Why is that? Um, so I'll come to the room. So it's, it's running. Um, alternatives for Yeah, maybe it's window. Oh, DOM loaded, which is good. Oh, <laughs> that's amazing. Okay, so that's worked so far. Um, let's keep it like this for now. Um, and let's see if we run it twice, what happens? Olama local HTTP tunnel. Oh, you can use uh, Ulama. 
Oh, you can serve Olama over localhost, which is great. So let's see if we can use Olama serve. Let me see what happens when I do a llama serve. Address already in use. Um, let me just ask what to do. I can just probably kill the port. Yeah. Else off I. And then I think it's TCP. Yeah. Okay, looks like I might have Olama already running somewhere, but I could probably kill it. So, kill nine, and then the PID is this. So, we do Olama serve, address already in use. <laughs> um, let's do. Um, so Llama is here. So um, that's probably why. Cool. So um, there we go. It's now running there. Let's now go here and says Olama is running. <laughs> Let's do Olama run, well, Olama list maybe. And uh, we have a, a small quantized model of Mistral. So let's do Olama run this. Um, and the way to call it is to do a post request. Oh. So maybe this isn't the way to do it. Quit and command C, control D. There we go. So maybe we do something like this and we just have to Ah, so there we go. Um, it's going quite quick. Um, and maybe we ask not to stream it. Um, Olama serve, don't stream. Ah, stream false. There we go. And we can just do this for now. Okay. So it'll probably take a little bit of time. Um, but already we could probably just do a call to a local API then. Um, let's just make it try to call this and see if we get a response. When the execute button is called so uh, then there's no need to use that dot file and it makes our lives quite a bit easier um, so I think it's going to be options HTML when the execute button is called call 
the uh, call the following URL and alert the response in a stringified format. Here's how to call it. Ah, shit. Okay, I fucked it up royally. Here we go. Problem reaching the API, so um, let's just use this one. So execute task, it's going to fetch task description. Let's just do it in options. Dot pi, dot js. Sorry, mixing these up. Okay, that's taking a little bit of time. Um, but let's go back here. Oh, there we go. Nice. Um, so um, let's try this out then. We'll load unpacked, we'll execute this. And by the HTML should just be an HTML app like anyone else. Failed to fetch, okay. Okay, so it's saying that uh, the course policy has failed. Hmm. So I wouldn't be able to avoid some of the cores ones, but I would be able to probably uh, use ngrok to host it as a URL. So I believe, uh, and then we'll just do some forwarding. Um, yeah, so if I do this, So it's making me sign in for an account. Um, so I'll keep you tuned uh, and I'll be back in a second. Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back. Um, so what we've done here is um, we've um, installed and, uh, and set up ngrok. So ngrok, what it allows you to do is it allows you to channel a local host URL and, um, and instead call a, uh, well, channel it and tunnel it through um, a third party uh, URL. So here we can see um, that I'm currently having this running um, which means that anytime I go to this URL, uh, and all I had to do was do ngrok HTTP uh, 11434, which is the local host um, uh, ID or port that we're running this on. And so if I do that, I get this URL. And so if I go here, and um, I go here. Now note that, because um, I'm using the free version, um, it's giving me this warning. And, uh, and I can visit site. So it says access was denied. You don't have access, so 403 forbidden, which is, uh, which is weird. Um, let me see if there is any other way of getting to this. So 403 denied, you got get. Um, let me see, I was following this tutorial. Um,
and maybe there's another way of going to this, but let me see if I can access localhost 134. So that's running. Um, I'm surprised that it's not allowing uh, the forwarding here. Ah, there we go. So um, let me see of why I'm getting 403 forbidden. Four oh three forbidden and grok olama. Let's see what they say. I've had an FQ. Let's see if we can run this here so we can remove this and we instead have it here. Let's see that worked. Okay. Visit site, and there we go, Alam is running. So we had to add um, just that end piece, which they mentioned the documentation. Um, sorry, I have a lot of documents open here. Um, let's just go removing, and I'm, I'm gonna have to add this to the request that I do. So I'm gonna add that also here to say, also add this header to the post request. Okay, so we'll let that run. Okay, let's see if that is added to the background. I thought that um, options.js would make it uh, um, Make the API call, I'll just add this here. Make the API call happen in options.html rather than in the JS file. So everything is gonna be local anyways, so it should be fine. Oh, and then um, let's tell it to call this. Um, call this API instead of localhost one. Okay. Let's let it do its thing. If then we have to remove anything there. Cool. So um, we got that running, and now if we clear all, we load unpacked, we go here. Should redirect us to the page, and it's empty now. And so here, uh, refuse because it violates the property. Um, so maybe, yeah, instead here of running that here in the scripts, I think where we were doing it before is here in options.js. So, okay. 
so we I think that's exactly what I got told by the LM as well. So we load unpacked. Okay, um, it's not working again. Which is weird. Because it was before. Okay, let's open the to-do. Um, and there seems to be something wrong here. So let me go back to what we had before. So we had this piece before. Okay, this is what we had before here. That was working there. Okay. So we let it unpacked. Jumps to options, and there we go. So it didn't, for some reason, like the changes that we did to options.js. And I think all we have to probably do is change the execute task. So I think there were some changes probably here that were maybe strange, but all we have to change is the execute task. And so then it just alerts the code here. Boom. It should guide you here and let's reload. We press execute, type error failed to fetch. So it's saying it doesn't allow it from the core's policies. see if this works. So it's saying that we should instead change options.js to handle the request and then background.js to implement it. Let's see. And manifest.json supposedly. Um, I think that makes sense. Um, what we could do is we could whip up a whole kind of front end app here instead. Um, cause I think if you do a local host, uh, index.html, then it should maybe be fine. Um, but I don't know if it can open up a local page. So we'll go into manifest.json. The options page is mm. let's see if we do like https google.com to see if that opens up. So if we do this. It must be a relative path. Oh, 
but maybe we can make the relative path be a redirect. So if we do something like window dot href google.com let's see if that changes anything So it does do a redirect. Um, what I might do in this case then is, um, this is just gonna be the app that forwards all of the content and uh, we'll then need a separate website here. And so um, for the separate website, uh, what we might do is um, we will just create index.html. Um, it'll have Um, but I would have to forward the content somehow. And so I'm not sure how that would be done. Given it is all stored here. Mm. Let me take a think. Because ideally we'd be able to execute that. Let me see, uh, local host access via Chrome extension. Oh, uh, maybe there's a way to do that. <laughs> um, if you add it to manifest. So uh, manifest.json permissions. HTTP and we'll also give it access to um, to this. Okay. Let's see if that works. And we'll have to remove uh, the redirect here. So we will update this. Okay. Unexpected end of JSON. So let's see what actually happens here. Um, but that's amazing, <laughs> the fact that it works uh, locally. And we might not even use N need ngrok in that case. So let's see what happens if here in JS, um, pop of .js, I think that's nothing. Um, so in background.js, we're calling it. And so let's just replace this instead with localhost. Um, which is, I think, one of these URLs. Yeah. HTTP. And then let's kill this Mbrock server. And so we can load unpacked. Reader access to this page, execute, type error failed to fetch. Um, so background.js is failing to fetch. Let's inspect. Console. So it's saying 403 forbidden. Ah, that's because of this, maybe. And yeah, um, let's just refresh that. Okay, so we've um, 
we've run that it should open it up in a new page let's click execute and so it says unexpected uh, input so let's do that again options.js um, let's also open this to inspect the network and so when we click there oh look slash generate so So we're getting 403 forbidden and so why are we getting 403 forbidden um, so in here um, we had to do host header um, add this to the host header when calling the API Let's see. Okay. So let's try that. Okay, and here we get uh, error executing task. giving 403 um, but when you run it here it seems to be fine HTTP so that's fine localhost API generate So I'm getting some type of error here, but the um, 403 forbidden Obama. Yep, from REST client. So I did the I did that. So if we change here the origin to HTTPS localhost, HTTP localhost, let's see if that updates it. Clear all, load unpacked. So I don't think that worked. Generate. So I got 403 again. Let's look here. Set the server coercions. Let's see, doing this.
Okay. So I think that should probably work okay. There might be even something more basic that I'm missing here. in the background square of 20. Same for three still. So let's see in the network what type of headers. Headers is accept. So this doesn't seem to have <laughs> have worked. Um, let me see if um, I can even do like fetch. All right, async. test equals async wait fetch test it's pending <laughs> fuck it um <laughs> Um, so it's getting re get requests, okay, but it doesn't like it when I have it here in options. Three. So I have to overwrite the origin header. Let me maybe try that. I think it was in capitals before.
overwrite origin header post request. The origin is one of the headers set automatically by the user agent and cannot be altered programmatically. So then it doesn't really work what was recommended. Um, Set origins Obama serve. So here I saw that um, Llama Origins Origins is still being set to all this stuff which it shouldn't Ah, uh, you have to restart the Olama application, I think. So let me do Olama serve. So I'm seeing origins there. So it's still on, let me try and do this, llama equals. See if that works. <laughs> um, okay. Oh, that's gone through. Hey everyone, so we're back. And uh, as you can see here, we've kind of touched this up a little bit with uh, some nice CSS, etc. We've also um, made it so we can save uh, uh, things from the virtual assistant, but we finally got it running, which is super exciting. So uh, all it is is uh, here you have kind of the to-do list app. Um, we can also make a button that it links to, to this, uh, but basically any time that I go to my to-do list URL here, um, it then opens it up uh, here. So uh, let's make some of this a little bit more configurable. <laughs> um, what we can do is, uh, first of all, that we can specify the URL. So let's go here and let's say, uh, make it, make it so the URL that the Chrome extension runs on can be set in uh, popup.html and also add a button um, 
to pop up HTML that links to options.html, make pop up HTML have the same CSS as um, options.html. So we can have that running. Um, I'll make that full. Um, that is something else. Uh, I'll just put it here in uh, minimize window. And, uh, and maybe we'll also want uh, a nice kind of um, a nice image here. So what we can do is um, maybe just, uh, this is gonna be a really bad one, but we can just take a screenshot here. And we can try to make this into a square. Um, let me take a bigger picture. And so here in desktop, we can try to make this uh, be exact. So 137 and need to be 137. Okay, and then we center this. That looks pretty centered. Cool. Um, and uh, we can save that as a PNG, so logo, logo.png. And instead of in desktop, you want to move it to the projects folder. And if we go to projects, we can do it in virtual assistant. And so then um, we can also add it. Also add this image to the manifest. And a nice description saying this is a virtual assistant that connects to your to-do list on Notion. Okay, cool. So I've added that, and now we go back to here. So we copy popup.html and popup.js, we can adjust. Let's see if that um, that ends up working as we expect it, um, and uh, and we also have to obviously run Olama serve. Okay, and we have it here, and so here we can see the last one. Let's also run this, see if it works. Okay, so some of it, um, it will have to maybe prompt to be a little bit better, but um, but that's working as expected. Um, and if we open up this as well, um, we see that it's too small vertically. Um, uh, and uh, let's just add this to manifest.json. Um, and we say the pop-up pop-up.html is too small horizontally, make it bigger to fit everything inside. There we go. So we'll let it run. And by the way, um, to, uh, 
to what some of the prerequisites here is going to be that you have to download Olama. So uh, just go to olama.com and you're going to need to download it. It's a way that you can run LLMs locally. It uses this uh, great package called llama.cpp, which is a way that you can uh, run um, open source LLM models uh, from your uh, from your computer um, using its resources. So you can run it on, on your CPU as well. So this is what we're using. And uh, for context, I'll show it in a different video, but all you have to do is go here download it and then you can download some of these models so i download uh downloaded some of the mistral ones i'm actually using a quantized version uh but here's the 7b model that should run quite well and you can do olama run mistral i've done um i've uh saved this one locally uh so you can do olama run mistral but you then have to run this command which is uh olama serve um so uh we'll be indicating that soon as well so um, let's go back to here this is finished up so uh, we'll copy popup.html and I think that should be it we'll load it unpacked and uh, there we go it shows the VA uh, and it also uh, shows us here the URL so um, this should be the URL and uh, here uh, it says options um, so we say change the name of options to instead say in popup.html button to instead say uh, go to VA and indicate in the input box that it is uh, input box placeholder that the default path is for the LLM is um, mm -mm -mm, it's localhost but I think we have it here Exactly. Um, Google host. There we go. So it's is HTTPS, HTTP, local host, but and indicate in the input box placeholder and through the label that this can be configured to be what the user desires. Okay, so that's quite a specific prompt, but hopefully it can uh, help us out a little bit. And already this is taking a uh, really good shape. So here we have VA, you can enter the URL and the options um, and uh, that's already uh, yeah looking pretty good. So um, it's changing popup.html, which is good. I think this logo looks a little bit weird. Yeah, as you can see, um, we still have like one letter there. So it's one three seven. What I might do is I'll do like one two nine maybe by one two nine, and so that requires just reducing it on this side. There we go. So that should be it fixed a little bit more. There we go. Um, and then here, I think popup.html probably changed. Um, and uh, um, here we'll say, make it so the URL in explain uh in popup dot html that the user first needs to be running uh an llm locally and say they can download olama to do this with a link to
to this site. They then have to serve this locally by running. Um, what is it? By running Olama serve like that. Um, change the code as well so that the URL used to call the API and also the model type are both taken as inputs and saved locally in save locally uh, from popup.html. Cool. So that's quite a long one. <laughs> this will probably require some debugging back and forth. Um, let's see. So popup.html, we change here. So that's done. Popup.js is updated. So we'll add that here. Um, and I'll just say here, note, uh, popup.js shouldn't contain any of the um, calling logic, it instead should be options.js. So edit that instead. Because I think op options.js has, uh, has the same thing. Oh, no. Um, actually, I was wrong. So popup.js, I think, does have the scripts. But actually, it's background.js that has it. Yeah, instead, uh, background. I can maybe test this by going to popup.js. Or actually, doesn't matter. So if I go to background.js, execute task, so um, let's try this where we go to popup.html. We go here to popup.js. And so, uh, yeah, it's reduced it quite a lot. And background.js should contain everything. Um, there we go. Cool. So uh, let's try this out. Um, so we do load unpacked. We go here. We see here that it says, um, to use this extension, you need to be running an L. You can download Olama here after downloading the server locally by running this. Configure this. And so here, um, I'll run uh, something else random. HTTP localhost 5000. Um, and let's see if it runs it. Okay, and what if I put uh, 1143? Okay, um, and let's do Mistral 7B quant. Okay, uh, let's see what it's gotten wrong. Localhost 404, page not found. So if we go here,
we see that there's a post request. Um, API URL, uh, it has to be slash API slash generate. Or maybe um, I should add this uh, here. Um, so let me try that out. And so I go here and I do slash API slash generate, go to VA. There we go. So now it's working. So cool. Um, what I might ask it to do as well is um, add more padding to popup.html. Space it out a bit more. Um, add, uh, make Olama be in a different colored pill container to show its code to be run in the terminal. Okay, um, that should pretty much be it. And there is our to-do list. Um, and then I'll also maybe say, also change the name of name across all HTML files to be to-do list VA. Cool, so um, that should pretty much be it. Um, I'll go to the manifest file and also make sure that um, has everything there. So that's cool. Um, Popup.html. Um, let's actually publish this under Chrome. So we'll go to Chrome extensions, Chrome extensions, Chrome web store. Um, we can go here and uh, I'm actually going to publish this as an extension. So uh, publish Chrome extension. And so uh, I'll have to sign in here. And uh, I'll probably uh, exit the video soon so I can go do that um, securely. But uh, let me go here. And as a last thing, we're going to be adding it here. And also uh, change the manifest. Hey everyone, so there you go. We've created a virtual assistant powered by local LLMs, meaning that any of your tasks and requests are private, secure, and free because they run on your computer. And hopefully you, through this, you've also learned uh, how to create Chrome extensions, this AI powered kind of developer flow, and how to work with local LLMs. So feel free to download that Chrome extension and start using it to be able to, uh, to really run some of those tasks so you can be chilling out. So, uh, stay tuned for the next video and uh, hope you found that interesting. Please subscribe and like and share and comment and all of the above. Uh, thanks for watching.